All right, next game, uh, Seahawks at the Dolphins. This line open up Seahawks minus seven. It's down to six and a half in in most sports books. There there is a seven still at Bet US. So if you want the Dolphins, you can get plus seven there. Uh, so who do you like in this game? Yeah, I like the Seahawks, but I'm not wild about this line because I I think this is kind of a little bit of a sneaky line. Like on paper, you think to yourself, yeah, this should be pretty easy, like going Seattle over Miami, but. Seattle's pass defense has been absolutely terrible this year. Um, the, it's been them and the Vikings and uh, the Falcons have just been absolutely awful against wide receivers in particular. Um, but on offense, Seattle's been awesome as well. So they've kind of won in shootouts so far. Um, I think Miami might have the personnel needed to uh, take down some of the Seattle secondary because they have Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, and Mike Kosicki. That'll be hard for Seattle to contain without a pass rush. And given that Jamal Adams might be banged up and there's some other guys for the uh, Seahawks that suffered injuries. So I can absolutely see the case for Miami here, especially since Seattle's allowed at least 25 points in all three games um, for an average of 28.6. So you're talking about them having to, if they allow their average amount of points, score 35 again to cover that, which they could easily do. But I, I don't know if it's going to happen every week. And uh, I, so I'm not big on this game. I'm on the Seahawks, and I just laid out a great case for Miami. So basically the reason I'm on the Seahawks is I don't want to bet against a red-hot Russell Wilson, um, but I might change my mind depending on the injury report. If Chris Carson can't go for the Seahawks on offense, I think they'll have a harder time running the ball. They'll still be able to move it, but you know, if they become one-dimensional against Miami's good secondary, it could be a problem. But then defense is really where it matters the most because you got Jamal Adams, Jordan Brooks, those guys banged up. If they if they can't play, I may switch my pick to Miami here because I just think this is this is just a little bit too many points to uh, give to a team with uh, such a bad pass defense against an offense that can move the ball and can score like we saw last week. I actually think Seattle's pass defense is pretty underrated. Like I know there's I know their numbers look abysmal right now. Uh, but if you think about it, like week two, uh, they had Quandry Diggs get kicked out of the game. And then week three, uh, Jamal Adams got hurt. Quentin Dunbar didn't play. Uh, I, th- I just think they've had bad luck with injuries. I think if everyone is healthy, if Dunbar comes back and Diggs doesn't get kicked out and Adams is healthy, I think they can actually do well against the pass. Uh, so I, I think that could be something to keep in mind going forward. The problem is that we don't know who's going to be healthy in this game. Like you brought up how Adams is banged up. Like he may not play. Uh, who knows if Dunbar is going to be able to come back. So uh, right now, Seattle's pass defense, while underrated for the long haul, I think right now is pretty bad. And that's something the Dolphins can take advantage of with Devontae Parker, Preston Williams. Uh, so, you know, I, it really – this game really depends on the injury report. Like kind of like you said, so many Seattle players got hurt last week. And um, we we both – we had Seattle in our, uh, in our joint super contest entry. And – they were up 30 to 15. I was feeling confident and then just kept seeing Seattle players fall uh, like one by one. Uh, it, it was just brutal. And at the end, I, was, I thought there was no chance that the Seahawks would cover. But then Russell Wilson came through in the end. Um, but it, it's going to be tough to cover six and a half if half the roster is injured, you know. Um, but then again, if, if Seattle gets a lot of players back um, and they're healthy, I, I think they should have no issues with the Dolphins at all. Um so, yeah, it, it's it's tough to call this right now without seeing any injury report at all. Uh, I'm going to have a stronger opinion on it, I'm sure, on Friday or Saturday, uh, when, especially when I post my Saturday notes um, come the weekend. But, yeah, right now I, I guess I would lean toward Seattle because Russell Wilson, but, um, you know, th- that could easily change uh, depending on what we see. Yeah, I think we're in the same boat. And just to respond to your point about the uh, Seattle pass defense, they definitely have the personnel back there to be successful. Like Quinn Dunbar, Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, all those guys are really good players. My concern, weirdly, is more with the pass rush. And I think that's why their pass defense has been so bad. It's because they can't get any pressure. So quarterbacks just wait back there until their receivers break open. And as we all know, you know, if you give a quarterback like five seconds in the pocket, someone's eventually going to break open because the uh, the cornerbacks and safeties are just trying to react to what other players are doing. So I don't think it's so much a personnel issue as it is related to pass rush or, you know, they have the personnel when healthy to be effective. Um, but I just don't know if they will continue to be effective if they don't address the pass rush in some way, shape or form. I agree. I mean, the pass rush is bad. Uh, I, I thought there was a chance that some of the young players would develop, like they have Daryl Taylor, LJ Collier, 
Um, maybe that maybe that happens in, in the second half of the year, or maybe they trade for someone. I, I could see them doing either or either happening. Um, but yeah, right now the pass rush is is the issue, not not the actual defensive backs. You're right. Um, and what Rich is saying is is kind of what I'm thinking. Like like betting against Russell Wilson, he's this hot. Like it's it seems like a losing proposition. So I'm definitely not gonna. I don't. I wouldn't say that, but I, I would definitely. The only way I would bet against Seattle right now is like is if half their roster is injured. So that's what I would do it. And I wanted to to address this from Michael. Uh, he says um, the Seahawks have to travel from coast to coast. This has actually been a good spot for Seattle. They're twelve and six against the spread on their Pete Carroll in these early uh, East Coast games. So um, it's actually like pretty good for Seattle. They they somehow thrive uh, doing this. And I, I've actually noticed that the like. Um, Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay have also done well in these situations. So I'm, I'm thinking that like these, these coaches have kind of figured out the dilemma because in the past, the West coast team traveling to the East coast to play an early start, you would just bet it. You would bet against it. Like not like automatically and you do well, but like not anymore. Like it's definitely not the case anymore.